Hello, everybody. This is Brian with Abracadoodle of Central Connecticut. Uh, it's been a long time since we've come to you with um, ideas and art projects that you could do at home. There was one during the pandemic that we didn't do. And um, given that people are back to school and then some people are now going back home from school and there's all kinds of different things going on. I thought that we would have another special guest on to talk about homeschooling and um, in this crazy time. So, uh, but as usual, I wanted to go over one of our famous artists that we were going to feature uh, during, uh, that, that we actually did feature during our Splat Doodle competition, but we never featured it in Abracadoodle of Central Connecticut. Uh, so wanted to talk to you a little bit about him. Uh, Pierre Mondrian, uh, was a Dutch painter who was really into music, really into architecture, really into structure. Um, and uh, it, he introduced a new form of art in the 20th century. And he loved to use straight lines and patterns in order to create interesting works of art for, uh, for his audience. So I'm gonna show you a couple of examples as usual of some of his work. This is right from uh, Pierre Mondrian's website or his uh, official artist website where much of his work was featured. And you can see he's got this, this combination of straight lines and then filled with colors. And there is a lot of rhyme and reason as is the case with many folks who are into music and arch architecture there's a lot of rhyme and reason to what he's doing. He's not just randomly filling in uh, squares of color. There's definite patterning going on here. Uh, here's a closer look uh, uh, at another one of his pieces with a similar, um, a similar outlook. And you'll see, you know, he's got all kinds of colors. He's got his black um, and his blues and his oranges. Um, and then this one here, this one totally flares my uh, OCD a little bit because there's so much detail uh, going on here. But I think what's important to say about art at home is that we're looking to maybe create something that is inspired by Mondrian's work and not necessarily a copy of it. So I would, I would quell your anxiety that way. Uh, this one I really love. Um, it's a sand dune that he did in 1909. I like this one because it's totally different from some of his famous work. It still has that patterning that we talked about, right? Uh, but this one very rarely creates a scene. Uh, many of his other works you'll see are, are just patterns. You know, they're boxes and patterns. Um, and, and they often were just called composition, um, this Broadway boogie. Uh, you know, they were often just called composition. This one is actually of a dune. Uh, and he did a series of those in the early 1900s that I think are really interesting. And then as usual, I would point out that the MoMA, uh, the Museum of Modern Art in New York has a lot of these artists exhibited virtually for you. Uh, they are open now, but they've kept many of these artworks and artists uh, get, um, displays available for you to view online. So as usual, I want to take a break really quick and introduce two special guests. Uh, we have, and we're, I'm going to try really hard to um, add folks to our, to our screen here and not leave anybody out. We have the wonderful Camille Chistoni from Abracadoodle of Trumbull, Connecticut. Uh, she's in the western part of the state and Linda Hanks, who I met with um, my daughter back when they, uh, our daughters, both of our daughters were really young and uh, we did arts and crafts together and other things um, with um, a dad's group actually that, that we were part of. And so I met Linda and started learning about homeschooling that way. And now that we're working with Abracadoodle, I thought, you know, I saw that Linda was doing a lot of work with homeschool moms uh, and dads and families. And I reached out to her and we started having conversations and it inspired us to maybe, um, you know, do some collaborating. So Linda, are you unmuted? I am unmuted. Hello. Hello. How are you? I am doing well today. Thanks for asking. Excellent. Excellent. 
Um, so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, about homeschooling during the year of COVID mm. and what inspired you to start working with other homeschool families. Oh, well, um, I'm a 20 year veteran of homeschooling. So I've been at this a long time. In fact, my kids have never been to a conventional school. We've done everything from home, which honestly means we've done a lot of work in our cars and museums and parks and just about any place you can imagine. Just because it's called homeschooling doesn't mean that you stay at home usually. Uh, I've been helping people with homeschooling for that duration and this year have started a business where I'm helping individuals and families and some organizations do work with homeschoolers in the community to help them understand what's the same and what's different and what the possibilities are for themselves. Absolutely, absolutely. And you had a very specific philosophy when it came to doing the art part of the lessons with um, with your own children and with other kids that were in your, uh, for lack of a better word, homeschool co-op. I think co-op's a good word. Okay. Um, yeah, I had, so there was a group of six families and we met once a week through most of the school year from the time that my older daughter was about two and a half until my younger daughter was about 14. So we met a lot. We did a lot of art, um, usually with those same six families. Sometimes people came, sometimes they went, but we had a really good core group and we would introduce art. But one of the fun things we would do is look at an artist and then figure out what their rules for their composition was. Um, so with Mondrian, they might have noticed that he only used straight lines. And so we would then in our art only use straight lines. Um, we might notice that he only used four colors. And so we would limit ourselves to a number of colors and the kids would have the ability to say, you know, there should be four of them because Mondrian used four or, oh, you know, like that's too few. I want to use six. Well, you know, is six really a good number? Is it a limit if it's six? And so we would really talk about what rules he used and then what rules we were going to use. And then each kid would create art inspired by Mondrian and then, but it wouldn't have to be just like his. Right. So the fun part mm -hmm. was then figuring out how to what is the flexibility within the rules that we came up with together. And it was right. really diverse. It was really interesting to see what these kids would do. Oh, yes. Yeah. So you really helped really develop the creative process. That was the part that's important to me. Right. You know, there's right. certainly the science and the history of figuring out what was happening at the time and what was in the artist's uh, circle that influenced them, right? And being influenced by those things, all of that is really important, but doing art that is your own is really where the magical stuff happens with art. Mm -hmm. So Camille, I'm gonna ask you to unmute for a minute. <laughs> um, and um, I'm gonna lob you a little softball. And, and I'm gonna ask you, First of all, how that might sound different or similar to Abracadoodle and what we do. So, yeah, um, it's similar in, in lots of ways. Um, we would study an artist. Again, we'll use Mondrian as an, as, a, as an example, since he is who we're studying today, um, and show them the artist, talk a little bit about the artist's life, and kind of leave it up to them at that point. So... Um, what we do is called process art. And um, so the process, the work itself is much more important to us than the final product that the kids create. Um, we can compare and contrast to what the artist has done. And, but we would definitely um, 
um, ask questions of the child and find out, well, you know, what were you thinking when you <clears throat> decided to do this or that, or, you know, whatever it was that they decided to do differently than the artist or the same as the artist. So. Yeah, and one of my favorite things is when we see <laughs> the young artist personality pop off the page. Yeah, yeah. You know, when they're, as Linda said, breaking the rules. So yes. and one of the things- For them to, you know, to share their thought process. Yeah. Sometimes they find it a little bit difficult and, you know, they're looking for the words and the ways to explain, which is, you know, beneficial in all areas of education. But what struck me is, is that we're often the child's first opportunity to do public speaking. Absolutely. Uh, and I, for me, that's really powerful as an mm -hmm. actor myself. Yes. Um, you know, that gave me that confidence being an mm -hmm. actor and standing up on stage in front of a bunch of people as a shy boy and, in middle school, yes. <laughs> um, you know, and I look at some of these kids who are really shy and we'll never force them to stand up and talk, but mm -hmm. you know, I might say, can I show your stuff? And then I'll ask them questions and they'll very yeah. neatly answer them. Uh, and you know, that's the beginning, right? So um, Linda, we saw a lot of synergy when we started talking to you. So that's why we, we asked you to come on. Uh, I'm so, so glad you did. Yeah, thank you for being such a good sport because uh, one of the things I also like to say is you don't have to be an artist to do this. I know you have some practice being an artist and you have your own daughter's art right behind you. I do, I do. There yes, it is. yay. Yeah. yeah, that's 13 years old or so. <laughs> but it's still beautiful. It is, I love it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so you ready to make your own Mondrian inspired piece? I okay. am actually, it, what's fun is that I have never made my own Mondrian in all of the years that we have worked together. So this, I'm looking forward to it. Camille, you've probably made about 20 of them, haven't you? <laughs> well, maybe yeah, at least I'm five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say 20, but yeah, probably about five. <laughs> and, you, Linda talked about breaking the rules. I made, on my first one, I made a heart. Um, because mm -hmm. you know, we're in the middle of COVID and we're trying to spread the love, right? Yes. So I made a heart with the Mondrian style blocks inside of it. Uh, and then the second time, because time was starting to become relative, I made a clock. Uh -huh. uh, so mm -hmm. just a couple of ideas. I think this time I'm just going to make a grid. Um, My favorite because... one that was submitted to me was, a, an, a, it was a mom and her teenage son and they recreated a Partridge family style bus. <laughs> Oh, I saw that one. Yes, I love it. I love it. I love it. So whatever kind of tickles your fancy, I'd say, Linda, let's break the rules if you want to break the rules. Let's do it. Yes, absolutely. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do, and Linda, do whatever you'd like, <laughs> is, you know, I think it's important to have a straight edge if you're going to do the boxes, which, you know, we're doing Mondrian, so I think we at least want to do the boxes, right? <laughs> um, so I'm going to create a grid, and the boxes don't need to be the same size. Uh, you'll see that, you know, Mondrian himself didn't have all the same size boxes. Um, and then... And I'm just using printer paper, by the way, and markers and a Sharpie. These are things that most of us have at home. Some of us are back home, some of us are in school and at home, and some of us are homeschoolers. Mm -hmm. Maybe looking for something fun to do with their kids uh, that they work with. Linda, what are you using for materials? So my artist daughter, the same one who created this piece behind me when she was four or five, um, she has generously lent me her artist's markers. So I have a whole bag of colors here. Ooh. And I too oh. am using printer paper that came right here out of my desk drawer. Excellent. I love it. I I want to say that I was tempted to do everything in pencil. And when I saw you really just going at it with the Sharpie, the permanent marker, I was like, oh, oh, I could, I could not plan with a pencil. I can just put lines on the page. Yeah. <laughs> and I am, I'm so totally being haphazard here. But that's uh, awesome. It just, it just demonstrates that, you know, you're taking a risk. And for exactly. kids, 
you know, it's okay for them to take that risk here. Absolutely. You know, Huge yeah, right. And as I'm looking at Brian's, he's already got lines going in both directions, but I've only, I've only done one direction so far. So next I will add that. And I, I have to let you know, I did my grid in pencil. Well, good. You were, you were. <laughs> That's what I did. So we have, we're thinking the same way. And <laughs> you're a planner. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm also staggering planner. the shapes of my boxes. You'll see. Mm. I'm not making them all the same. So, you know, a little bit of rule breaking, but not really. Because he did that too, right? Yes. Yeah. I have to say that the that piece of art that you commented made you, you know, like feel a little anxious there. You know, your OCD with all of the not boxes and just the crosses. Yes. Right? I might like to revisit that and do something like that one, but I would I would do that in pencil first. Oh, oh yeah. And same with the dunes. I love the dunes. Um, I thought that was so beautiful, but oh yeah, that's that's a way more complicated piece, isn't it? Yeah, I really liked the the use of color in that one with the the pink and then the fading pink mm -hmm. into the blue to make the horizon. Yeah, I really liked that. Let's see, how many colors should I use? I could do whatever I want, right? That's right. Let's see, oh, I gotta use black. You always like to use black. Okay. So I'm using just my Crayola washable markers. Um, the reason I use the Sharpie to outline was um, so that way it doesn't run. The Sharpie is less likely to run. Also, when you're demonstrating on the computer, it's difficult sometimes to see pencil lines. Oh, it is extreme. <laughs> yeah, forget it, right? Yeah, yeah. Now yes. you're gonna all see my lack of patience <laughs> when I'm doing art. And that's- no, a Look at how patient you are. You're using that fine tipped marker on that great big giant box. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I have to go get a bigger marker. Yeah, I choose fat <laughs> markers. <laughs> so no, time, say, no time for that today. <laughs> I was gonna say, Brian, that yours is reminiscent of a brick wall to me, right? And now that you're using oh. red. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm starting with red. Okay. Yeah. But certainly we're not going to make them all red. What are you all doing? Uh, I have added my second, my lines going Ooh, in the other. Hold on, line. let me, let me get you. you oh, wow. That's Ooh. beautiful, Linda. Wow. That's very Mondriani. It is very Mondriani. <laughs> she's, like she's like following the rules. That's awesome. Well, I kind of am following the rules. Look at my short line. You know, I love uh, that. Yep. I love that. I really like that in that piece that I was talking about. I mm -hmm. think that I would do that all in pencil and then I would just make the X's, you know, like just the cross pieces of all yes. of those things that I wanted. Oh yeah, absolutely. Some I of like the boxes that. are open and some of them are closed. Yeah. It's almost like a metaphor for life. I love <laughs> it. And uh, Camille, what are you working on? Um, I've chosen to do a diagonal piece. I don't, you can't really see my line. Ooh, so, yeah. um, I'm a Met fan. So those are my first two I'm, choices. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> but I did, I chose to use black and four colors. So. Black Excellent. I'm, yeah, I'm also using four colors. How many <laughs> colors are you going to use, Linda? I don't know. I'm looking. I have so many color choices. Yeah, it's hard to I was, choose. I was thinking maybe I would go pastel because Mondrian usually used those really deep yes, colors. Very bold, mm -hmm. primary ish colors. But then I was also thinking because he used them in opposite places, maybe I would use secondary colors. Ooh. I like that. Okay. So you still have the contrast. Yes. Right, but but it would be rotated on the wheel a little. So instead of yes. blue and red and yellow, using orange and green and purple. Perfect. Uh, you you oh. mentioned the color wheel. What well, that has been one of my favorite lessons so far was teaching the color wheel. Oh yeah, 
Um, and you know what the kids loved is mixing the complimentary colors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and like they, <laughs> they love that. Like, oh, that looks like grandma's t-shirt, one of them said. Okay. <laughs> 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 and I'm like, oh, oh, honey, we can't let grandma know you said that. <laughs> Maybe grandma would like it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's a gift for grandma. Uh, and then the very next person said, that looks like a rotten avocado. Oh, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's which is. reminiscent of the yes. 1970s. Just what grandma wanted. Exactly. Yes. It's a memory. <laughs> yeah, it totally. The stuff kids say just cracks me up. Uh, oh. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Why did I choose these tiny markers? Yeah. <laughs> Brian, we don't know why. <laughs> yeah. It's what was a, I thinking? It's, um, you know. I just grabbed these it's, off the shelf. I'm like, okay, here we go. <laughs> it's an opportunity. Opportunity for growth. Yes, to learn. Yes. <laughs> to choose fat markers for mine. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's funny because this is the first one. This is the one we did probably the most. Yeah. Although Mondrian too left a lot of white space on a lot of his pieces. Oh yeah. I'm not filling in every box. Yeah. I always have this impulse to cover the entire page. Yeah. So maybe I you do need too. a different artist for that. Yeah. Or maybe I just need to examine that in my own head. Why? Camille, that? what was your favorite splat doodle artist? Oh my goodness. <sighs> Let me see. Oh my gosh, there were so many. Um, the first one that's popping up for me is Van Gogh. Mm. Oh yeah, we did a Starry Night Doodle. Yes, and it was it was challenging for me. You know, um, I really wanted to. Uh, I thought, oh yeah, I could do those swirls. You know, no problem. It's just, it's just swirls, but no. Oh yeah. It did not look like Van Gogh swirls. <laughs> Uh, that one cracked me up because I had my both my daughters do it mm -hmm. and I had one do this like perfectly crisp version of the Van Gogh swirls and they were almost like too perfect they yeah. were very OCD <laughs> um, and then Madeline just took and just threw all kinds of paint on there and was mixing things that shouldn't be mixed you know the primary color so she was right. getting like this brown and <laughs> <laughs> and she just had she gave up and walked away and I had to like, just let it dry sweetie come back and you can you know finish it yes it was so funny uh talk about the personality coming through my my favorite was probably um I love Kasama Yayoi yeah that was fun yeah uh because of all the polka dots polka and dots yeah you, know, you could do whatever you want. I made a butterfly out of polka dots and that's super fun. Um, I also enjoyed Warhol very much. Oh, <laughs> Not yeah. to enjoy. Exactly. Yeah. What did we do with Warhol again? I don't even remember. Um, we did the, uh, like, well, I did the four contrasting, explain the same picture, but with contrasting colors. Oh, that's um, right. That's right. Yes. And I had one, one of my artists did like four rolls of. Oh, you froze up on pandemic. me. Yeah. Um, another artist did um, her dog. It was beautiful. She just did a portrait of her dog in four different um, color schemes. It, yeah, it was really fun for me. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. Linda, do you have a, fav a favorite artist? No, I don't have a favorite. I think that they're all really based on mm -hmm. mood, right? Yep. Um, I, I really am drawn quite a lot to photography. Um, so I do, like, I mostly emulate photographers when I'm out and I'm thinking about art. A lot of times it's photography that I am drawn to, especially natural photography. And in that way, I put the limitations because again, I like the idea that art happens when you make rules and then play with them. 
right. and I tend to make the rules before I click the shutter, right? Like before I actually take the picture is when I'm thinking about what I want from something. I might even go out into the world with an idea ahead of time of what I want yep. to take pictures of. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, a, a couple of years that. ago, I went out into the woods about um, kind of this time of year, but maybe a few weeks ahead of now. And there were these red berries left on the bare trees. Oh. Uh, and they were actually sticker bushes. So I took black and white on a very gray day. And I got really low and looked up at these red berries. And on my camera, I have the ability to just to take it in black and white, except for one color that's present. So I did that and I have these very red in amongst all of the black and the, the branches were all crisscrossed against each other. And it looked almost sinister, but oh. it was fun to do. That does sound fun. And you got to show a little bit of your of your own process there too. Now, I, uh, I guess I did. Yeah. <laughs> um, question for you though: um, When you were a homeschool mom, yeah, yeah, um, what uh, you mentioned, you know, this very specific way you would teach art, and often it would be, you know, going to the uh, museum and seeing a, uh, an installation or, or a famous artist and then teaching it. What was your favorite one to teach? Do you have one favorite? Andy Goldsworthy. Really? Now what made that Andy your favorite? Andy Goldsworthy, hands down. Really? Um, so he, yeah, right. Uh, he's a living artist and he creates pieces with natural objects. So he um, famously collected a whole lot of leaves in a variety of colors from, and you could do that now, right? It's the yeah. fall and we have so many bright colors out. Well, he collected them and then he ordered them by their color. So he made a, a tree rainbow, right? So the deepest, darkest burgundies, purple leaves would melt into red and then faded to orange and yellow. And then he'd go and he would, attach them in this long parade with um, these long hawthorns that he has in England, right? Oh, so wow. he's attaching them using natural materials. And then he took these long trains of them and released them in a brook near his house. So the water moved his train through the water and then he took pictures of it and that was his art, right? Oh, wow. Um, he, he builds with stones and sticks, he uses water as a reflective surface. He's fascinating wow. to watch. I, I and, go, I'm sorry, go ahead, finish. <laughs> and you can watch a video of his process. Like he has two movies and the first one is um, called Rivers and Tides, I think. So you can watch him create but my favorite part about this video is that you actually get to watch him fail, which I think is really important. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Um, and I'd have to say, I found him when my kids were seven and nine, maybe. And I watched the, the documentary, this whole documentary, it's at least an hour long, maybe longer. And I was so excited about the process of watching an artist fail at what he intended to do that I wanted my children to watch with me. And I just picked out a little piece, just watch this little bit. I didn't think at seven and nine, they would have the, you know, sit down -itude to watch an entire documentary. And they sat fascinated for, through the whole thing. They watched the whole thing. So I watched it twice. And then for our art day co-op that we did, they were so excited about it that we showed it to their friends. And again, this group of kids ages like five to 11 watched this documentary from beginning to end because it really is compelling to watch someone fail and yeah. then succeed. What was, his, what was his last name? I missed that when you- Goldsworthy. Um... Okay. Andy Goldsworthy. <clears throat> and there are so many examples 
of his work online um, in stone. He also works with ice, which is really exciting, right? So he makes these like three-dimensional forms, spirals, and these spiky balls that he uses icicles and he breaks them and then melts them together. And again, he's just using those natural pieces. Mm -hmm. um, and I find, I find every piece of it just fascinating from the, the conception to the actual building and then to his photography, because some of this stuff is ephemeral, like the leaves, that's not oh, yeah. the last, right? right? right. Um, he has a whole series where he picks a particular day and a particular type of snow. It's really dry snow. Mm -hmm. And then he takes, he throws it into the air and takes pictures of it so that you can see the crystallization and the rainbows in the snow. Oh, wow. Right. You know, yeah, I'm going to look that up because I do think it's important that people see the struggle of the process and not just that final product because, you know, we even see with what we do some anxiety around. Well, it's what we teach. Yeah. 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 Oh, no, absolutely. I love it. That's great. I'm definitely looking that up. Thank you so much. I'm Glad, I'm glad that we asked that question. That yeah, you I'm totally too. inspired me because I, I had taken a weekend trip with some friends a couple weeks ago. We were in Old Saybrook and we rented a house and it was right on the water on the sound, but it was a very rocky beach. Like you couldn't sit there. There's no sand. It was just all rocks. And I sat on those rocks for about an hour and a half. <clears throat> and I was picking up rocks and just looking at them and I could just see masterpieces in the rocks. I'm like, what a great lesson it would be to just look at that rock and then grab some paint so, so Scott, and just right make now, whatever so you that see that come to life. Oh yeah. And you know, what you would see would be different than what I would see. Again. What so, kind of paint would you use, Camille? Um, uh, you know, the old, I think acrylic is what, I mean, that's what I'm most familiar with and most comfortable with. Um, so, I mean, it, I, I don't, I'm not, I don't have a huge amount of experience with different mediums in paint. Um, so acrylic makes me feel safe. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, that's awesome that you have that. I was thinking about, watercolors because then you get that bleeding of yeah. them and you could really play with the fact that you know like this blue rock it's it has so many blues in it it's striped but it's really that blue gray right, and right. You can really right play with that yeah i mean i'm i'm, I'm inspired now and i brought some of those rocks home so Good. Go, get rock. I'm go get my it, that out. let's do it we're gonna make a doodle out of it camille <laughs> okay <laughs> So um, I, I feel like I'm like I'm done. Yes, right? I was just gonna say that. I'm like, oh, does anybody want to show their work? <laughs> I'm almost done. Let's make. I'm gonna make a little. Um, I'm gonna make a little gallery. Okay. See, with everybody, kind of like with a Brady Bunch. The Brady Bunch. Except with only three of us. <laughs> Abracadoodle Bunch. Exactly. And then oh. we have to wait for Camille. I know. I was just like, hmm. she's like, she's like Camille's she's the she's coloring. Camille's so, the one student in class who's like, no, I have to get this perfect. Well, I, I do want to say that I'm kind of cheating because I am using my my daughter's good markers, right? Oh yeah. And she you, has <laughs> these really thick sides <gasps> on one. This is great, Camille. And these thin sides, and it's on the same marker. <gasps> Ooh, I'm jealous. I'm totally jealous. <laughs> I have to go over this with my thick markers after because <laughs> I couldn't, I just couldn't. But this was so much fun. I hope people will do it at home. Um, yeah. Post them to us. I know it's past the official Splat Doodle contest, but you know, Abacadoodle Central CT. And Camille, what's yours? Abracadoodle Trumbull, Connecticut. Yes, mm -hmm. Abracadoodle Trumbull, Connecticut on Facebook, on Instagram. And then, um, Linda, do you want to share one last time your business name? Sure. I'm Ren Homeschool Consulting, and I'm on Facebook too. So if you put in Ren Homeschool Consulting, you can find me there. And I will share this video and people can see what we did today. Awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. And as usual, I'm going to tell everybody, stay creative and have some fun with this. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks,